Reading from the Second Book of Samuel In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to meet David in Hebron and said to him, Here we are. We are your bone and your flesh. Some time ago, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the affairs of Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be their ruler. So, all the elders of Israel came to the king in Hebron. King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed him king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for forty years, seven years and six months over Judah, in Hebron, and thirty-three years in Jerusalem, over all Israel and Judah. David and his men then set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the land. They said to David, You shall not come in here, for the blind and the lame will repel you. They meant that David could not come in. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David continued to grow more powerful, and the Lord, the Almighty God, was with him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark Glory to you, Lord. At that time, the scribes who had come from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Jesus then called them and spoke to them in parables, How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a family is divided against itself, that family cannot stand either. Similarly, if Satan rises up against himself and is divided, he cannot survive, his end has come. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first ties up the strong man. Then indeed he can plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Jesus said this because they were saying, He is possessed by an impure spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, may the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today, we are invited to reflect on the inspiring passages that the Word of God offers us, taken from the second book of Samuel and the Gospel according to Mark. In these scriptures, we find timeless lessons that not only shape the past but also illuminate our present and point to the future with divine hope. Let us embark on our spiritual journey with a brief look at the daily experiences we all share. Our world often seems like a battlefield, where we are challenged by adversities, temptations, and difficult choices. Yet, in these moments, the Word of God emerges as a light that guides our steps and strengthens our hearts. Contemplating the first reading, we are transported to a crucial period in the history of God's people when David is crowned king over Israel. Let us imagine the people gathering, uniting under David's divinely ordained leadership. This scene resonates in our hearts, reflecting the constant quest for just leadership, unity, and the establishment of God's kingdom in our own lives. In this context, David's story teaches us about the importance of submitting to God's will. He was chosen not just for his military prowess or impressive appearance but for his heart that sought to please God. Thus, we are invited to reflect on our own lives, questioning whether our leadership, in any sphere, is guided by divine principles of love, justice, and humility. However, the narrative doesn't end there. In verses 6 and 7, we encounter a striking reminder of the need for submission to God. The king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land. The Jebusites said to David, You will not come in here. The blind and the lame will ward you off. These seemingly challenging words contain a profound truth about our own vulnerability in the face of evil forces. How many times in our lives do we encounter seemingly insurmountable obstacles? At times, we are confronted with challenges that appear so formidable that we doubt our ability to move forward. 
However, just as David trusted in God's promise, we can trust that when we face our own Jebusite strongholds, God empowers us to overcome obstacles that, in human eyes, seem insurmountable. Now, let's see how this message connects with the words from the Gospel of Mark. In this passage, Jesus is confronted by the scribes who accuse him of acting under the power of Beelzebul. Jesus' response is clear and direct. All sins will be forgiven the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Here, we are prompted to reflect on the nature of sin and divine forgiveness. Jesus reminds us of the importance of recognizing our faults, repenting sincerely, and seeking God's forgiveness. However, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, as Jesus warns us, is a persistent denial of divine grace, a refusal to accept the mercy that God abundantly offers us. This passage challenges us to examine our hearts, to discern if we are open to the transformative work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Sometimes, we may find ourselves trapped in patterns of thinking and behavior that distance us from divine grace. Yet, the good news is that, while there is life, there is hope. God invites us to turn back to Him, to acknowledge our weaknesses, and to allow His Spirit to renew and transform us. Allow me now to illustrate these spiritual principles with a story echoing the truths found in the scriptures. Imagine a solitary navigator on a vast ocean, facing seemingly endless storms. He battles furious waves, violent winds, and seemingly impenetrable darkness. In moments of despair, when all seems lost, the navigator spots a distant light. This light, small and flickering at first, grows as he approaches. It is a lighthouse, a source of guidance amid the storm. This image reflects our spiritual journey. Just as the lighthouse guides the navigator in the darkness, the Word of God illuminates our paths, providing us with direction and hope even in the most challenging moments. Now, how can we apply these truths in our daily lives? Allow me to present some practical principles that emerge from these biblical passages. Firstly, we are challenged to seek God's leadership in all areas of our lives. Just as David was chosen by God to lead Israel, we are called to lead with hearts committed to justice, compassion, and humility. May our actions and decisions reflect the divine will, inspiring those around us to also seek God in all circumstances. Secondly, let us courageously face the Jebusite strongholds in our lives. These strongholds represent challenges and obstacles that seem insurmountable. However, let us trust in God's promise that, with Him by our side, there is no adversity we cannot overcome. May we, as we face life's storms, keep our eyes fixed on the divine light that guides us. Thirdly, let us examine our hearts for signs of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Let us be honest with ourselves and with God, allowing the Spirit to reveal areas of our lives that need to be surrendered to His grace. Sincere repentance opens the doors to divine transformation, allowing us to experience the forgiveness and restoration that only God can offer. Finally, let us recall the image of the navigator in the tumultuous ocean. Just as he spotted the lighthouse in the storm, let us be attentive to God's signs in our lives. God speaks in various ways, through His Word, prayer, the Christian community, and even in moments of silence. Let us be open and receptive to divine guidance, allowing God to lead us on our spiritual journey. At this moment, I invite each of you to a brief period of silence. May we, in humility and sincerity, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, revealing areas that need transformation and renewal. May this moment of reflection be a step toward the constant pursuit of God's will in our lives. In concluding our reflection, let us remember that we are a community called by God to live in unity, justice, and love. May our lives be living witnesses to the transformative power of the Word of God. As we submit to His leadership, courageously face the storms, and seek renewal through the Holy Spirit, may we live in a way that glorifies God in all we do. Dear brothers and sisters, may this homily not be just words we hear but a call to action and transformation in our lives. May we leave this assembly renewed in our commitment to God and to one another. May the divine grace, love, and hope accompany us in every step of our spiritual journey. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.